The MakerBot 3D printer is an additive manufacturing machine. Similar to how a computer printer prints ink on paper, the MakerBot prints plastic onto a build platform, which builds layers to create three-dimensional models in almost any shape. Let's take a look at the lesson objectives. By the end of the video, students will be able to remove parts from the build plate, apply tape to the build plate, level the build plate within the machine, change the filament, and run a part on the MakerBot. While this video focuses on setup of the MakerBot Replicator 2, the techniques shown can be applied to many types of 3D printers. Let's identify some parts of the machine. The filament is located on a spool behind the machine. It's sent through a guide tube to the extruder head, which rides on the X-axis carriage. The Y-axis is oriented front to back on this machine. The Z-axis travels up and down. The part is created on the build plate. The operator controls the machine through the user interface located on the front panel. To level the build plate, scroll down to the Utilities menu from the home screen. Choose Level Build Plate. The machine first homes itself against its limit switches. The written instructions indicate that we should tighten each of the three knobs under the build platform about four turns. In reality, tightening them just a couple turns should be sufficient. Tightening the knobs clockwise as viewed from the bottom brings the build platform closer to the machine's carriage, lowering it from the extruder nozzle. Notice how the paper slides very freely. Loosen the knob underneath the build platform, turning counterclockwise as viewed from the bottom up, while continuing to slide the paper back and forth. When the paper just starts to drag with a slight bit of friction, the proper height is set. Press the flashing red MakerBot button to move to the next point. Repeat the process at the second location by loosening the knob, turning counterclockwise as viewed from the bottom up. This raises the build platform until there's a slight bit of friction between the paper and the extruder nozzle. Perfect. Repeat the process for the third point. Notice how the paper is loose. We're turning the knob counterclockwise. And if the paper is too tight, you need to turn the knob back clockwise to set the proper distance until the paper just slides with a slight bit of frictional drag. Perfect. Now the MakerBot will go check all three points a second time. The set point still seems correct. Check location two just a slight bit of drag. And notice how the second time the MakerBot goes through the pattern, it chooses points in a little bit wider triangular pattern to really check that the build plate is level. And to the third location. This point feels a little bit tight, so I'm going to actually tighten the knob underneath the carriage just a slight bit clockwise as viewed from the bottom up until the paper slides just a tad bit more free. Perfect. As a final check, the MakerBot will move its extruder print head to the center of the build plate. The paper slides just a bit free in this location. It did slide with a bit of friction at the three triangular points, so that tells me that either the blue tape may be slightly out of thickness tolerance, or the build plate may be slightly warped from several prints. This shouldn't really affect the quality of the print. Leveling a build plate takes a lot of practice, so don't be afraid to give it a second try if you don't get it on the first time. 
When the build tape is more heavily damaged due to difficult part removal, it will need to be replaced. Try tearing large portions of the tape so it peels cleanly away from the build plate. Sometimes it's beneficial to start from an edge, whereas other times it's easier to peel from the middle. Now it's time to apply new blue masking tape to the plastic build plate. Apply the tape such that it's parallel to the edges of the build plate. This takes a bit of practice and may require redoing a time or two. Fasten down about one inch of the end of the tape before pulling it across the build plate. Pull out enough tape to cover the build plate entirely and then let the tape relax into a smooth, gentle curve. With your hand, gently apply the tape downward to the build plate. It's important not to pull or stretch the tape as this is a common source of wrinkles. Notice that we left about a quarter inch of tape overhanging the edge. This helps it secure to the build platform and prevents lifting during the heat of 3D printing. The build platform is now covered in tape smoothly and free from any wrinkles that would inhibit the 3D printing process. Now it's time to cut the tape from the roll. I'll just use a putty knife to tear it. It's not important to be super precise in this step as long as the tape extends past the edge of the build plate. We'll wrap the ends over the edge. And we're finished applying the tape. At times, the machine needs new filament loaded. Before we can change the filament, we need to lower the build platform away from the extruder nozzle. We do that by going down to the jog mode menu. We press the sideways arrow until the z-axis appears and press the down arrow for z-positive. This moves the build platform down away from the extruder nozzle, which is actually considered the z-positive direction in model space. That should be enough space. Now that we've lowered the build plate, we can change the filament. We go back out of the jog mode menu and up to the Change Filament menu. We'd like to unload the existing filament in the machine. During the filament unloading process, the machine's internal LED lights change from the set color to red to indicate the extruder nozzle is heating. Remove the filament guide tube and pull the filament out of the extruder head. To unload the filament, simply rewind it so that it pulls through the clear guide tube back onto the spool. Then the spool can be removed from the machine. The free end of the filament should be placed through the small hole on the side of the spool to ensure that the filament does not become tangled. To load new filament is simply the reverse of the steps. This spool is one that we had left over from a previous print job. Place it onto the spool holder. With the filament coming off the bottom of the spool, so it goes up into the guide tube. Reattach the guide tube to the machine. We're now set to load the filament into the extruder head. When reloading the new filament, trim the end to ensure that it's clean and square, free of any kinks, burrs, or damage. Press load on the MakerBot control panel and feed the filament into the print head. It will take a little bit of a push to get it to feed the first time. Hold it close above the print head and forcefully push it in until you feel the motor drive wheel begin to pull it in on its own. Reinstall the filament guide tube. Once the filament is loaded into the print head, you'll see it begin to extrude out the nozzle. 
Allow it to purge for a few seconds before stopping. This ensures that the print nozzle is clear of any previous filament. The purge filament can be removed from the build platform, however watch out for the hot nozzle as it can cause burns to the hands. It's even possible to change filament color in the middle of the print for multicolored parts. Now that our build plate is leveled and our filaments loaded, we're ready to start printing our model. Install the SD card with the logo facing outward into the SD card slot. A simple push down should click it into place. From the main menu, we'll choose Build from SD. The most recent X3G file is shown at the top. In this case, the file is called updated330tool.x3g. Select it to begin the print. Notice the machine homes itself before printing. Once the extruder comes up to temperature, the print will begin. Notice how the printer lays a line of filament before starting the actual part in order to clear its extruder nozzle. The print strategy begins by tracing an outline of the part and follows by filling the interior. It's important to watch the first layer of the print to ensure that it adheres to the blue build tape. Most commonly, problems with the print occur during the first layer build. It looks like this print is well underway. We'll come back in a few hours and take a look at our finished part. Looks like the finished part turned out great. To remove parts from the build plate, a tool such as a putty knife is often helpful to lift the parts from the blue tape. Some parts are easier to remove, where others take more of a prying force. Larger parts are often more difficult to remove than smaller parts. Additional force may be required to remove some larger parts. When lifting the parts from the build plate, take care to not damage the build plate in the process. Successful removal of the parts will yield blue tape that often can be reused for the next print. Which of the following operations are started from the user interface screen? A. Beginning a print. B. Leveling the build plate. C. Changing the filament. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. All of these operations are started from the user interface screen. With 3D printing technology, the only limit to what you can build is your imagination. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.